I'm coming in! The one and only. <laughs> Daniel Stern is an American actor, director, producer, and screenwriter who rose to world fame in the early 90s. No Christmas goes without people turning in to enjoy his brilliant performance in the movie Home Alone, but there are more gems in his filmography. Moreover, his artistic talent goes beyond movie endeavors. You'll learn everything about it from our new video. Daniel Stern, what happened to the wet bandit Marv from Home Alone? How could this possibly be what you end up like? Well, I'm going to try to take that as a compliment. Daniel Jacob Stern was born on August 28, 1957 in Bethesda, Maryland. His parents are Jewish. His father, Leonard Stern, was a social worker and his mother, Cynthia, ran a child care center. Daniel has a younger brother named David Michael Stern, who also chose to pursue a career in cinema, becoming a TV writer. The Stearns wanted to cultivate a love for art in their sons and encourage their artistic creativity. Daniel went to Bethesda Chevy Chase High School and jumped at every opportunity to participate in stage productions. The boy started to demonstrate his acting talent from an early age and even got a leading part in the school production of the musical Promises, Promises. During his senior year of high school, he played Tevye the Dairyman in the musical Fiddler on the Roof. By the time Stern turned 14, he set his heart on becoming an actor, even though he knew he would have to invest a lot of time and effort to make this dream come true. He took on a part-time job as a gas station worker to fund his education in the future. Daniel wiped the car windows and pumped gas. Apart from salary, he lived off tips. One time, the guy heard that the city of Washington would be hosting a Shakespeare festival. He wanted to be part of it so badly that he was willing to take on any job, so he applied for the position of lighting engineer. Stern made such a good impression during his interview that he was promoted to a walk-on in the production of The Taming of the Shrew, starring Glenn Close. He also got to be in the production of Shakespeare's comedy As You Like It. It was the moment Daniel knew that he could make a living as an actor. Stern dropped out of school a year before graduating to go to New York. There, he enrolled in acting lessons at HB Studio in Greenwich Village. His teachers were the American actor and director Austin Pendleton and Austrian-American actor Herbert Berghoff. Daniel's talents for acting started to shine through even more after he took the classes and parts in theater productions began to roll in. The young man starred in off-Broadway shows first, and then he started getting roles in Broadway productions. He performed on stage at the Public Theater in New York, Cherry Lane, and Manhattan Theater Club. Stern joined the famous troupe named Second Stage Theater. He worked with the actor Bob Gunton and got both leading and supporting roles in different productions. Daniel's career in cinema began in 1979 when the director, Peter Yates, cast him in the youth comedy drama Breaking Away. Although it was Stern's debut, he got a leading role portraying Cyril, a teenager who is daring enough to start a cycling team with his friends and challenge the best athletes in the university. The movie scored several Oscar nominations and won in the category for Best Original Screenplay. In addition to that, the movie got a Golden Globe as the Best Comedy Motion Picture of 1979. You know, like, uh, like when they get hit on the head with a frying pan or something and then their head looks like the frying pan with the handle and everything, and then they go boing and their head comes back to normal. The movie was definitely a success, and it's still considered to be one of the most inspiring American motion pictures. It was Daniel's golden ticket into Hollywood. On top of that, he got $8,000 for the role, which was a whole fortune for him back at the time. Stern spent the next 10 years starring in one film after another. In 1979, he got a bit role as a student in the comedy Starting Over. A year later, he was cast in the drama A Small Circle of Friends. After that, he got a part in Woody Allen's black-and-white movie, Stardust Memories. The comedy-drama film received a warm welcome from critics and was nominated for a Writers Guild of America Award for Best Comedy. As for our hero, he was over the moon about working with the famous director. I can't tell you. I love you. I mean, I love your work. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm an actor. Right now, I'm working as a busboy. Really, I am an actor. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Anyway, I don't want to bug you or anything. I just wanted to give you a picture. During that time, Daniel also starred in the musical comedy One Trick Pony and in the comedy It's My Turn. 
Daniel got to work with Michael Douglas and Jill Claver. Daniel was lucky not only when it came to his career, but also in his love life. In 1980, Stern tied the knot with his long-term girlfriend, Laura Matos. The ceremony took place in the backyard of the groom's parents. The happy couple shared the special day with their family and close friends. In 1981, the actor got a small part as a hitchhiker in the family comedy Honky Tonk Freeway. When he wasn't filming, the young man was in the theater perfecting his acting skills and participating in different productions. The next year, Stern was offered a leading role in Barry Levinson's movie Diner. It was a true gift from the universe as the cast was legendary. Mickey Rourke, Ellen Barkin, Steve Gutenberg, and Kevin Bacon. They played a group of school friends who spend time together in a diner talking about life, plans, and their deepest fears and dreams. Is it too complicated to just keep my records in the category, okay? Just put the rock and roll in with the rock and roll. Put the R&B in with the R&B. I mean, you're not going to put Charlie Parker in with the rock and roll, would you? The motion picture had Oscar and Golden Globe nominations. With a budget of $5 million, it grossed more than $14 million. After that, Daniel starred in the drama film I'm Dancing As Fast As I Can. However, 1982 brought Daniel something bigger than great works. On April 12, he became a father for the first time. He and his wife welcomed their first son, Henry Isaac Stern. The boy excelled at school and extracurricular activities. He graduated from Harvard, worked as an environmental lawyer, and taught law at the University of California. Now, he's a politician elected to the California State Senate as a Democrat. In 1983, Stern appeared in the thriller Blue Thunder, the comedy Get Crazy, and the drama Daniel, directed by Sidney Lumet. The actor was stunned by Lumet's professionalism and admitted that counted his blessings as he did what he loved. In an interview, he said that he was planning on claiming his spot in the movie industry and working there for the next 50 years, playing the roles he enjoys. He was aware that his career could end at any moment, but he knew he had a fulfilling acting experience. The next year, our hero starred in the Bible-themed TV movie Samson and Delilah. Stern also made his debut in a new genre starring the horror movie Chud, abbreviation for Cannibalistic Humanoid Underground Dwellers. He portrayed the Reverend Shepherd, who was leading the fight with underground monsters. As soon as the movie came out, critics absolutely destroyed it, but as the years went by, it became a classic. You can see allusions to it in TV shows like The Simpsons, Flash, Castle, and Archer. Later, Daniel appeared in the short comedy film Frankenweenie. The actor got to work with the legendary director Tim Burton while he was still looking for his signature style. The movie tells a story about a boy resurrecting his pet with the help of science. Stern played the kid's father. Other parents worry about their kids getting into drugs. I guess we're lucky. I bet he has the best science project this year. Disney reps were appalled after the test screening as they believed that a movie like this would hurt the company's reputation. Tim Burton was fired after a scandal, and the motion picture waited eight years before it got released. In 1985, Daniel starred in the rom-com Key Exchange and appeared in 10 episodes of the drama TV show Hometown. In 1986, the actor got another chance to work with the movie maestro Woody Allen on the movie Hannah and Her Sisters. We're okay? This is the great. You don't buy paintings to blend in with a sofa. It's not a sofa, it's an ottoman. God, for... The movie got good reviews and grossed $40 million at the U.S. box office with a budget of $6.5 million. In the same year, the actor appeared in an episode of the TV show Comedy Factory and a peculiar movie, The Boss's Wife. Daniel plays the leading role of Joel Kiefer, a stock trader trying to move up the career ladder while the boss's wife tries to seduce the office worker. This is when Stern became a father for the second time. His daughter, Sophie, grew up to choose a career in music. In 1987, our hero was featured in the comedy Born in East L.A. and narrated the TV show The Wonder Years. Apart from his acting talents, Daniel has a soothing voice and great oratory skills. You can hear his voice in 114 episodes of The Project. Apart from working as a narrator, Stern also directed several episodes of the show. The sitcom revolves around the childhood memories of a man named Kevin. Stern voiced the adult Kevin. Fun fact, the actor's son Henry took part in the show finale. Hey Dad, wanna play catch? I'll be right there. In 1988, Daniel appeared in the adventure movie Weekend War. 
He also starred in the thriller DOA and the comedy drama The Milagro Beanfield War. On January 23, 1989, Daniel and his wife welcomed their third child, daughter Ella Marie. When she grew up, she built a career in healthcare. After the birth of his youngest daughter, Stern starred in the sci-fi movie Leviathan and the family comedy Little Monsters. The movie is about a little boy who becomes friends with a monster under his bed. Daniel played the boy's father. The plumber's coming next week. <sighs> Great. I can leave them all these dishes. Just keep telling yourself it's our dream house. The dream house. The dream house. Fun fact, the actor Fred Savage, who played the leading role, also played the main character in the TV show The Wonder Years, narrated by Stern. Then the actor got a leading role in the comedy Friends, Lovers, and Lunatics. In 1990, the dramedy Coupe de Ville was released. It was about three brothers who don't get along. They get together to go home in a car that their father bought for their mother's 50th birthday. Stop the car, Bobby! Why? I'm doing fine! Stop the car, Bobby! Marvin, look at Stop this! Stop the goddamn car, Bobby! All right. The movie got mixed reviews and was a total disaster at the box office. During the first weekend, the motion picture grossed only $66,000 and barely earned $6 million globally. After that, Stern got a small part in the comedy My Blue Heaven, starring Steve Martin and Rick Moranis. He also did a voiceover for a Burger King commercial. Then there was the TV movie The Court Martial of Jackie Robinson. The film depicts the early years of the baseball star and his time in the army, focusing on the court martial for insubordination regarding segregation. In his career, the actor brought to life dozens of different characters in a variety of genres – action movies, comedy, thriller, drama, and TV shows. But he got the role of his lifetime in 1990 when he played the wet bandit Marvin in the family comedy Home Alone. It is rightfully considered one of the best Christmas movies of all time. The actor was laughing out loud when he was reading the script sent by the director, Chris Columbus. The actor said yes at once, and soon he and Joe Pesci, who played his partner in crime, got to work. Marv! Harry? Why the hell did you take your shoes off? Why the hell you dress like a chicken? The difference in the actor's height was another trick that Columbus used to accentuate the comicality of the bandits. Joe is 5'3", so Stern, being 6'4", looked like a giant compared to him. Although the cast was professional, there were times on set when no one was laughing. Stern's arachnophobia and extreme fear of spiders was the biggest problem. According to the script, a huge tarantula was put on his face, which left Stern petrified. Still, they got the scene on the first take. The crew added the sound later, so they didn't scare the spider. But the actor denied this in a Facebook post, stating that the sound was recorded during the scene shooting and the scream was an allusion to the movie Psycho. The movie showed great results at the worldwide box office, grossing over $467 million with a budget of $18 million. The comedy was nominated for Oscar and Golden Globe and received a number of prestigious awards. As for the burglars, Harry and Marv were nominated to be included on the list of the 100 heroes and villains according to the American Film Institute. After the success of Home Alone, Stern allegedly made one of his dreams come true and bought a 1956 Cadillac DeVille. Its cost was approximately $50,000. We'll learn from this, Randy. If you're as determined as Ralphie, maybe one day you'll get one. In 1991, Daniel narrated an episode of The Simpsons and played the leading role in the comedy City Slickers. The movie tells a story about three friends going through a midlife crisis. They decide to move to the Wild West looking for new thrilling experiences. Hey, you know you match a supermarket, that's when the food arrives. Don't you have an assistant or a kid or something? Arlene's father likes me to do it. No free rides, Philly boy. No free rides. <laughs> The cast was offered free horse riding lessons, but Daniel refused to achieve a better comedic effect when his character was riding the horse. The movie got good reviews and received different nominations and awards. With a budget of $27 million, it grossed $179 million worldwide. Meanwhile, the wild success of the hit Christmas comedy about Kevin who was left alone made the studio and Chris Columbus decide to film a sequel. In 1992, the world saw the premiere of Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. It depicts the adventures of Kevin and the burglars from the first part in Christmas, New York. You bust out of jail to rob 14 cents from a Santa Claus? Every little bit helps. Besides, now we got our new nickname. 
We're the Sticky Bandits. The Wet Bandits are now called the Sticky Bandits as Marv came up with a new trick. He equipped his gloves with double-sided tape so that stolen things stick to them. Now it's shocking, but unlike viewers, critics had negative feedback on the movie. It was another blockbuster and became another Christmas classic. The actor got $1 million for the role of Marv. Since then, he has been widely known as a comedy actor. In 1993, Daniel made his directorial debut. He released the sports comedy Rookie of the Year. It's a movie about a teenager named Henry who dreams about playing in the top league. One time, he breaks his arm while trying to catch a ball. After the doctor removed the cast, he was surprised to see that the boy's tendons healed in a weird way, making his throws extraordinarily hard. They filmed the movie on the grounds of the real stadium Wrigley Field between matches. Apart from directing the movie, Daniel also played a secondary role. Gonna take a lot of sweat, but eventually, I'm gonna mold you into one of the greatest 12 year olds that ever played this game. Now! Critics gave the movie 5 out of 10 and were pretty harsh about Stern's directorial work. Nevertheless, the motion picture grossed $56 million with a budget of $14 million. In 1994, City Slickers 2 The Legend of Curly's Gold, the second part of the successful comedy, came out. After that, Daniel starred in another comedy titled Bushwhacked, where he played a delivery boy pretending to be a Boy Scout leader to hide from the police. Dear lizard, let it drain! Move your hips and spell your name! Send it straight and send it hard! Now a sword fight, go on guard! I got some bad news for you, Palmer. That ain't rain. While the young actors in the cast had to do workouts to prepare for swimming and climbing scenes, Daniel deliberately avoided any kind of exercise. He believed that this way he could really show how alien the outdoor life was to his character. A bit later, the comedy Celtic Pride was released. Stern co-starred with Damon Wayans and Dan Aykroyd. You are sick. Oh yeah, I know I'm sick. I am sick and tired of you and your therapist taking something pure and twisting it around! Despite having a great cast, the movie didn't have great success, grossing a bit less than $10 million inside the country and receiving negative feedback. Moreover, some critics claimed the movie to be offensive and offered that the cast fire their agents for dragging them into a project like that. At the beginning of 1997, Daniel worked on the animated TV show Hey Arnold. The actor voiced Mr. Peckenham, the school teacher of the main character. Stern also appeared in an episode of the crime TV show Gun. In 1998, he starred in an episode of The Wonderful World of Disney. After that, there was the criminal comedy Very Bad Things, starring Cameron Diaz and Christian Slater. When the big storm comes, and all the forests are knocked down, and all the rocks have fallen away, and, and the leaves are bare. What's left? What is left? The studio execs had high hopes for the project, but it failed at the box office. With a budget of $30 million, it grossed only $21 million. In 1999, our hero was offered to do a voiceover for an animated adult show based on the popular satirical comic strip Dilbert by Scott Adams. The actor gave his voice to the main character, a typical office clerk trying to survive in a big corporation with quirky and annoying colleagues. The TV show ran for two seasons with 30 episodes overall. Critics had positive reviews, and the only bone they had to pick with the show was that it ended too soon. In the same year, Stern opened a teen club in Malibu. The community for boys and girls was founded after the Columbine High School shootings. Parents in Malibu realized that a tragedy like that could happen anywhere if teens had no way out. Together with his Home Alone co-star Joe Pesci, he raised money to open a school where kids with any background could get an education before going to college. Starting from the early 2000s, Daniel got way fewer roles. The actor was featured in the comedy How to Kill Your Neighbor's Dog. He appeared in only one scene as a guest at a costume party and wasn't even credited. In 2001, the actor got a leading part in the comedy Viva Las Nowhere and played a single father in the TV series Danny, which he also scripted. The show aired only nine episodes. There was a time when Stern didn't get any projects in the movie industry. He started doing sculpture in his garage, a hobby he had since he was a schoolboy. In 2003, our hero portrayed Joe Binder in the sitcom Regular Joe. 
The series aired for only five episodes and was well received by critics, but the viewers didn't find it interesting enough, so the project was cancelled. The next year, Daniel appeared in the short film The Last Full Measure. In 2006, the comedy Bachelor Party Vegas came out. The movie was shot in 16 days, and Daniel got a bit part in it. He also starred in the rom-com The Last Time. Look, really? you can ask anybody, okay? When it comes to my staff, I am a cupcake. I understand how salesmen can fall on hard times. Lord knows, I've been there myself, okay? But I have got to get my troops moving here, or they're gonna hang my... They were filming in New Orleans right before Hurricane Katrina hit, so the crew had to leave the place. In the meantime, Daniel continued to work at the theater. He wrote the off-Broadway hit Barbara's Wedding, which was produced by the Dodgers Baseball Club and the Manhattan Theater Club. It starred such famous theater figures as John Pankow and Julie White. The production ran for six months. Stern was also featured in a production by Gary Marshall Theater. In 2008, the criminal comedy Otis was released. Our hero played the role of a father whose daughter was kidnapped by a maniac. He also starred in the comedy A Previous Engagement, where he portrayed an oblivious husband whose wife is planning a date with the love of her youth. I'm one of the few people on the planet who's never been ditched. <laughs> it's too late to get ditched now, right? Got my babe for life here. Well, where, where, where's your wedding ring? In 2009, Stern voiced a Family Guy episode and appeared in the TV series Monk. Stern also got a bit part in the sports drama Whip It. In 2010, the actor had a small appearance in the thriller The Next Three Days, starring Russell Crowe. The movie received positive reviews from critics and grossed $62 million with a budget of $30 million. Next came out the short film Branches, which the actor narrated. At the same time, Stern starred in the TV comedy Battle of the Bulbs. Daniel got the leading part of Bob Wallace, a family man who goes out of his way every Christmas to decorate the house in the most festive way. Now, are you ready for some Christmas decorating? Ooh, yes. Yes, who? Yes, Santa. Santa who? Uh, Santa, sir. That's more like it. Now, where is... Alongside acting, Daniel does charity and volunteering. His efforts didn't go unnoticed, and in 2010, he received the President's Volunteer Service Award that recognizes the valuable contributions volunteers make in communities. The next year, Stern starred in the short rom-com California Romanza, in 2012, he appeared in the comedy A Christmas Story 2, where he played the old man. It was a DVD release, and the general feedback from critics was negative. In the following year, Stern appeared only in one episode of the TV show Workaholics. In 2014, he was featured in another TV show, the dramedy House of Lies. During that period of time, the actor appeared in two episodes of the TV show Getting On. Soon after that, the Home Alone fans were in for a treat, as the creator released an 11-minute video featuring the deleted scenes. From 2014 to 2015, Stern was cast in the history TV series Manhattan about the creators of the atomic bomb. He also directed several episodes. Silver lining is he doesn't remember what a son of a bitch he used to be. Well, space-time is curved. Maybe we're all living in the past, huh? Good to know at least one senior citizen has his faculties intact. As the years go by, the actor doesn't take on as many acting gigs as he used to when he was younger, but he expanded on his artistic interests. For instance, the actor has reached a new level of his favorite hobby. He created sculptures for art fairs across the U.S. The star is also an artist in residence at Studio Channel Island's Art Center located in Camarillo, California. Apart from that, our hero worked on lots of orders, created pieces for gallery exhibitions and art fairs. Daniel does bronze sculptures, and his creations are exhibited in art objects around the U.S. For instance, in 2016, he created a sculpture for the city of Monrovia. The bronze figure called Action is installed in front of the Krikorian Theater. When asked about his hobby, Daniel confesses that his mind gets completely absorbed by the sculptures he's working on. He doesn't talk to anyone and gets lost in the process. In 2016, Stern appeared in an episode of the TV series Angie Tribeca. A year later, the legendary comedy about the City Slickers got a sequel, the short film City Slickers in Westworld. The six-minute video depicts the reunion and new adventures of the characters. In the same year, Daniel starred in an episode of the TV series Love. But the most exciting event of 2016 in Daniel's life concerned his oldest son, Henry. Stern Jr. decided to run for California State Senate, and our hero did everything he could to help him with the election campaign. The actor was active on social media, participated in the PR campaign, and encouraged people to vote for Henry. 
When Stern Jr. won, the famous actor was over the moon, and he later shared that he got teary when the children's choir sang at the swearing ceremony. He wrote on his Instagram, I have done all I can for my children, and they are children no more. In 2018, the comedy Game Over Man premiered. Fun fact, the characters make references to Home Alone several times. However, the movie got negative reactions and was given 3.6 out of 10. In 2019, our hero presented the fantasy comedy James vs. His Future Self. Daniel plays a scientist who starts a battle with his future self. Time travel really f***s you up, man. The past and the present both pulling you towards them. It stretches you out a little bit each time. More depending on how far back you go. I mean, this trip did me in, man. Apart from that, up until 2021, Stern starred in the TV series Shrill. Currently, the comedy Everything's Peachy is in the works. Stern will produce, write, and play the leading role in the movie. Apart from that, the actor appeared in the fourth season of the drama fantasy TV series For All Mankind. Daniel's net worth is estimated at $20 million. He's been married for 40 years and continues to be a good husband and father. One time, Stern dedicated a post on social media to his wife, saying that his life would be empty without her. She's given the man nearly everything that is important to him – home, kids, love, support, and the deepest friendship he could ever imagine. The couple bought a house in Malibu in 1993 for $1.15 million, and they've been living there up until recently. Where are you? Malibu. They're in Malibu. Malibu. Inside, there are three bedrooms, a kitchen, several living rooms, with a fireplace and the main one. The actor's residence has high ceilings with wooden beams and sliding glass doors. In the yard, there are several recreation areas, a neat garden, and a swimming pool. It was a home for the Stern family for many years, until the family decided to sell it for almost $15 million. Now Daniel and his wife allegedly live in Maryland, but they prefer not to share pictures of their new residence with the public. Daniel Stern has made a name for himself as an 80s and 90s comedy icon. A whole generation grew up watching him in family movies. Even though Daniel is a world-renowned actor, he stays true to himself and does things that bring him peace and happiness. But for us, he'll always be Marv, a wet bandit from Home Alone. When was the last time you watched the iconic Christmas comedy? This is the greatest Christmas in history! If you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything interesting.